exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And on today's episode, I have the phenomenal, the incredible Adrian Marcel. The crowd goes wild. Okay, Adrian is a platinum selling recording artist, singer, songwriter, actor, and also known as Raphael Sadiq's protege. You've come a long way. Uh, you probably have proteges of your own now. Uh, <laughs> I think so, right? But I yeah. interviewed you like years, 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 years yeah. back. I think um, when I was like, uh, I can't remember where I was hosting it. It might have been after Buzz or Black Hollywood Live. But you uh, blessed me then with your presence. Yeah. And now you're giving me the honor again. Yeah, yeah. Love, love, love as I've like watched your career uh, blossom that. and grow. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk today about like passion and purpose, okay. but you're going to start off with my spice breaker, mm. which is when is the first time you fell in love with yourself? First time I fell in love with myself. Yep. Oh, that's, I mean, that's that's straight out the womb. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I ever had a problem loving me. You know what I mean? Maybe other people for sure. But um, yeah, not, I, I've always had this thing about myself where, you know, um, yeah, just love it, love the skin I was in, you know, even when there, there were flaws and there were things as you know, as you grow up, you get older, you know, there's little things you, you look at, you know, um, but I always appreciated, you know, what I did have and, and what I possessed and just how I looked. And I think even to today, like I take it, I take all those things serious because mm -hmm. I feel like those are those are blessings that you have when you're able to, you know, you know, feel for yourself like that. You know, we and I come from the land, you know, East Oakland, the Bay Area, the Yay hey. area. So you feel me? You know how we do. We stay feeling ourselves. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I love this answer. However, yeah. I'm going to make you go a little bit more vulnerable. Okay. Uh, did you ever fall out of love with yourself? Was there ever a moment that you didn't like who you were or where you were at in your life? Yeah. And how did you pull yourself out? Yeah. There's There's been a couple of times, though, where, where that's uh Tell that's us the story. The what happened? Yeah. So... Um, I think I think one of the first times I experienced that was when I moved to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in ATL and um, maybe, you know, a couple years, maybe after we did our our our, our podcast, mm -hmm. our interview together. And um, it was just I guess I, I think it was being away from home, being being away from the Bay so long. You know, you're in this environment that's completely different from from what you know, what you're used to. Um, and at a time where I feel, you know, we had just got dropped from the label mm -hmm. you know at that at that time so that's fresh mm -hmm. you know, you're going through those moments fresh and you're you're still asking yourself questions like was there something I didn't do was mm -hmm. there something I did do you know um I'm going back to this empty apartment you know I'm I'm looking at nothing but you know a blow-up bed and, and some, you know <laughs> what I mean things mattress. like the air mattress and such you know and I'm just like you know is is all this worth it you mm. know what 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 is this you know what does it all mean you know um and I think I had started to kind of let myself go a little bit too mm. you know and but it was very it I got out of it very swift and it wasn't something very deep to get me out of it it was it was quick I was actually shooting a video and there was a scene where I had a tank top on mm. you know and uh, one of my friends ended up being part of the crew, and I didn't know. Uh -huh. So when he sees me and around all these girls, around all the whole crew, he yells, he's like, damn, bro, you got hella fat. <laughs> and at that moment, I was like, you know, I have to practice what I preach. Mm. I always tell people, you know, if you don't like something, change it. Mm. You know, change the circumstance. Yep. Don't complain about it. Don't sit in it. Yep. You know, you waste time when you do that. So I think, you know, for me, it was just at that point, you know, realizing that there was there was time now that I needed to put to myself and to figure out how to go deeper into into what it was, because mm -hmm. I think it was a lot deeper than just, you know, you're not the size you want to be yeah. or, you know, and that type of stuff. I mean, it was all of these things coming in at once. And then the pandemic happens mm -hmm. and I literally had time. It was like it was like God was opening up this this situation where I could get out of my own head. Yeah. Because me sitting down and being still while everybody else is moving around is totally different from the entire world stopping. Yes. You know I feel like I could do that for a lot of people with so eye opening. I could calmly accept what was happening. And then once I did that, you know, man, I just started falling in love with me because you at the crib. I stopped cutting my hair. I stopped, you know, shaving my face. I started seeing these sides to me, you know, and it was little stuff like, you know, certain people be like, man, I love your curls. <laughs> And me, I'm thinking this is a bad hair day. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm like, okay. You know, and these things just start naturally happening. I started getting back down and trying to get back into music. I put myself in the studio, you know, didn't know what I was doing at the moment because it was so like, I'm I'm just I'm just indulging back in yeah. it finally, you know? And and then I met my boy Sonny B and and he, you know, we started concocting these sounds and these sonics and now this new genre, R and Bay, and then the Brodies and and all of these different entities start to be built off of what we're what what our visions together have been. Yeah. And I mean, I tell you, spice, like, I feel spicy now. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I'm feeling Love real it. spicy. You feel me? Break Kaya. down what R, R and Bay is, because I oh, need this yes, broken down. I'm yes. like R and Bay. It almost right. makes me want to say R and Bay, like Bay A E, like with your yeah. Bay, but it's actually R and Bay because of the Bay Area. B-A-Y, but yeah. what is R and Bay? So R and Bay is a, a is a fusion of of hyphy. You know, if you know about the Bay Area, you know how we do. We go stupid, we go dumb, we go stewy. You feel me? Um, it's a mix of that with your traditional sonics of R and B. Um, I like to think of myself, I like to think of Sonny as uh, R&B connoisseurs. Mm. You know, we, we grew up on a lot of, you know, of all age, of all uh, eras, you know, styles and, and, and such, you know, genres. Yeah. And him coming from, you know, the C- CRSB, uh, an, an island, you know, a reggae group, you know, and their sounds, we're kind of like bringing all of this vast variety and mm. broad variety of, of musicality and, and sonics and we're bringing them together and again of course you talk about bay being from the bay area that yeah. lingo that slang you know hella started here you know we 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 always been saying food slack food smack it don't slap right you know what i'm saying you know it's um it's all of these different lingos and vibes and character that we are and where we're from. So for R and Bay, for you to be R and Bay, it's not just you know you can sing really good. <laughs> you know, like oh you have a great voice, it's really good. Um, but no, it's more about you know your swag, your sauce. Like you know um, you being from whether you from East Oakland, you know right. Frisco, uh, Richmond, you know Vallejo. Uh, I mean you know it's 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 wide, but you know how much love the Bay has always got throughout the years mm-hmm. for being how we are, and we're just taking this this Bay Area thing and this R&B movement and we're saying, well, we're taking ourselves out of the competition, Mm. you know, and that's how we kind of came up on it was more, you know, no one can be R and Bay. Number one, if you're not from the Bay Area. Oh, excuse me. Number okay. one. What if you went you to know? school in the Bay? So I went to Cal. Can I get a little R and B? You can. You can definitely. Absolutely. It's just okay. like it's so just no like if I go home. to New York and I stay in New York for like <laughs> you know a month, I'm gonna be like, Yo, B. You know, hey, let me, let me talk to you real quick, B. Years. You know, let me talk to you. We can have chocolate. You know, you know, something like that. You know what I mean? It might okay, it might fine, turn into whatever. something like that. I, I rep San Diego anyway. Yeah, you you know. But if you wanted to, but 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 what we don't want to do is to you know what. What more of what we're at is about how people have always come to the Bay Area. They have taken, you know, our culture. Yep. They've taken our this styles, our lingos. They they go and they they repackage it up and then they sell it back to us diluted. Mm. You know what I mean? That's how you get people saying, "Oh man, food slaps." It doesn't slap. How? Explain <laughs> to me how food slaps. You know what I'm food saying? Slaps. You came here. <laughs> you came to the Bay. Spice, I'm gonna give you a, a pass, boo. You came to the bay and you and you heard somebody say, "Hey, man, that slap." You feel me? But we was either talking yes. about music, right. beat. You know what I'm saying? Um, a, a a party slapping, something like that. You know. But when you talk about food, it smacks. It's oh, just smacking right saying. here. You know what I'm saying? Yes, food That's smacks. how. That's you yes, know what I mean. So again, okay. when you come and you spend a couple hours here and you take the culture and you go back out We're using and you it. create this 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 yes. thing that is a no no for us. You know what I mean? And it really just tells us that you that you aren't from here. Yep. But you cannot be from here. You can come in here, get the love of the soil. You know what I mean? Really get engulfed in it and absolutely create some R and Bay, especially when you're working with me and Sonny, you know, because mm-hmm. we are the founding fathers of it. So what is your ethnic background? I'm black and Filipino. Okay. Yeah. So is any of that been influential in your music? Anything Absolutely. from uh, Filipino culture to Absolutely. of course black culture, but yeah. how has Filipino played a role? So subconsciously Filipino has played one of the biggest roles um, for my, for my career because I feel like, 
I'm finding so much out about the the culture, you know, because mm. for the longest, and maybe you remember, you know, earlier on in my career, I didn't want to put that out there mm-hmm. that I was anything other than black, you know, and not that it was so much about the black part of it, but it was just more about let's stay focused. Let's focus on the music. Let's focus on the sounds that you're hearing rather than trying to attack yourself or detach yourself Mm -hmm. based around my, you know, my ethnic background, you know, and as as I went on through this whole thing, I've always been asked. But again, I, I hooked up with my boys and they being in the island culture, you know, they they rep it you know they're proud with honor mm-hmm. you know it's 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 dignity it's 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 just it's it's a thing you yeah. know and it's communive it's community you know and when they started breaking it down for me like dude you are missing a whole culture mm. and a whole vibe by you just introducing yourself to the world like they want to know that you know we we can represent talented mm. individuals like this that they they take you in like you're theirs like you're ours you know and I didn't also didn't want it to be a thing where it came off like I was only doing it just for clout. I was only doing mm. it for more fans. You know, I wanted it to be organic. So we didn't press it too hard, but we just allowed us. They just I thank them because they put me in the I'm grateful the for them, too. I think yeah. uh, it's it can be challenging, right? When you're yeah. mixed. Yeah. Um, when you are biracial, there's this element of like wanting to be proud of who yeah. you are, but then also when people ask you, what are you? Mm -hmm. Is it coming from a place of like uh, curiosity and like uh, you want to celebrate me or is it coming from a place of you want to box me and now treat me a certain way now that you know what I am? Exactly. It's like checking the other box when you're applying because I don't want to, I don't want to not get the job (laughs) because I'm not, so you know what I mean? Like, yeah, for sure. Because then they want to know, well, okay, if you're black and Filipino, how Filipino are you? How black are you? And so it does become this like, um, you know, tug of war between like, uh, each culture asking you yeah. sometimes like we'll choose which one are you more down for yeah. and so rather than opt in a lot of people will opt out and I think I definitely opted out and I think at this point though I'm not doing either I'm not answering your questions you know, <laughs> like it's you know what I mean it's not even like a thing like that like yeah you can know what I am but however you whatever happens from here whatever you take this from here that's your business yeah you know what I mean and it's 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 really truly just Again, you know, like you, you asked the, the spice breaker, it's, it's really about like when you have that feeling of what it feels like to not love you mm-hmm. or not love something about you yeah. that you should and you find it organically and yeah. on your own, not, not by force, not by, you know what I mean, anything like that. But when you find it and you're able to get back to it, it's like you appreciate things in a whole nother form of fashion now, you know, so... Um, I'm not debating with people anymore. Yeah. I mean, even on Instagram, you say something I'm like, you're just blocked. Just, just, just <laughs> you're like, I don't have time for all that. I don't that. have time for this because there's too many blessings that are that are that are happening in the in these times, man. You know, there's so much happening that I have to be happy about and I have to be I have to be thankful for, you know, because it could be back at the, you know, air mattress and no furniture. That part. And we don't want to go back mean? there. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about uh purpose so do you feel like uh music for you and r&b specifically do Mm -hmm. you feel like that has been a passion or that it's a purpose uh for a long time you know i i did think that it was it was all passion like my my selfish passion my selfish desire you know um but I think now, I know now that it's purpose. Mm. Everything that's happening right now is through purpose. I mean, getting here today, you know, you 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 hit me and you you gave me the day. You're like, look, can we do it Wednesday? I'm like, absolutely. Um, I don't have, I don't, I'm not out there, but yes. <laughs> like, I live in You know day. what I'm saying? I think I called you, it's called Sunny, like, hey, we got to go to LA, you know? <laughs> but, um, but even getting here, like, you know, when you start to pay attention to the signs of, of the universe, right, when things are happening and you start to be able to read the future based on that, like, mm. oh, I know this is about to happen because mm. I've seen how this goes. You know, I paid attention to the ups and the downs yeah. early on. So even now, I'm sitting back and I'm looking at the way things are falling in line. I'm like, this is not passion anymore. Yeah. Because passion has a limit, right? Passion has a has a has a rest period. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, my passion can take a break 
my passion can stop. My yeah. passion can change. Mm. It can shift. It can change directions and all the rest. Right. You know, but when you talk about purpose, that's your purpose. It's almost like a, 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 t- a tag or a, a brand, yeah. you know, a branding that you're given on your on your way in here. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That, OK, this is our this is the so and so is going to be a musician. X, Y, and Z change the world stamped. It doesn't matter whether you take a break. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter whether you go left, right, up, down. Your passion, your 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 um purpose is always gonna be in the same spot. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like you're using it like the North Star. Like this is how yes, I get back aligned star. because sometimes I'm I get distracted and sometimes I get lost. But once I find back and get aligned back with that purpose, mm-hmm. oh, it's on, baby. You know what I'm saying? It's it's we going to town, you know? So I think everything that's happening for me is is completely, utterly, without a shadow of a doubt, you know, just to keep it at that one thou wow, is that it is all purpose for me. And it's it's something that I had to accept again. I walked around for a long time denying the purpose and not realizing I was denying it. Mm. And when I say that, I mean by people come to me like, you look so familiar. Are you Adrian Marcel? And I would be like, my family would know that it would be like, uh, who? Who's that? <laughs> nah, I ain't heard of him. Like, what's this now? How you spell it? <laughs> what's oh, wow. And I would sit there in real life, have play this role mm. with people. Because for me, it was being humble. It mm. was avoiding the, the thing like, oh, I'm a star or uh-huh. I'm this or you know what I'm saying? And, and then I was given what I was acting like. Like I, what I was acting like I wanted, I was giving it. Mm. People stopped coming up to me. People stopped calling. People stopped. You know what I mean? You don't want to answer the phone. You don't want to talk. Okay, well they're not gonna call well, anymore. Well, yeah, you went on that vibration of I don't want attention, and so <laughs> and so I'm not gonna give you, so you any more attention. Get it. Yeah. And I had to realize that, and I had to, and I had to, I had a, I, I remember right before the top of this year, I had a, a, a huge prayer. It was like a monumental prayer for me. Like I'm gonna remember it when I'm 70 and 80, you know. But What's I had to prayer? real life. I had to real life, like you know, take accountability before God, you know, and let Him know, like I apologize mm. for how much disrespect I've I've shown yes. you. You know what I'm saying? Like you've given me so much talent, and I'm walking in these rooms like I'm beneath people. Mm. I'm walking in these rooms so that I can help their light shine, and you gave me this light for yeah. a reason. You know what I'm saying? So as I'm trying to build them up, I'm tearing myself down. Mm. You know what I mean? Before you. And I always wanted it to be, you know, when my life is over, when I when I when I meet the father, you know, I'm not able to give him anything Mm. because it's been used. But how I was living, there would be a lot to give back. Yeah. Like, hey, thanks. I I held on to it. You know what I mean? That's I feel like that's wicked. You know, that's a wicked um, uh, way to reciprocate love to someone who's to, to an entity that's giving you so much, you know? So today I accept it all. When mm. people come up to me, are you Adrian Marcel in the flesh? It is I, you better believe it. <laughs> the one and only hello. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it's, and, and, and you give that energy. And I feel like the more that I've walked into these rooms knowing who I am and what I'm capable of, it's, it's almost created this, this new monster in me that I love. I'm, 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 I'm here, extra I'm here level for the myself. Monster. I want to marry me. You are going to tell me what you respond to. <laughs> <laughs> I want to marry me. I yes, marry I love me. that. <laughs> You're going to tell me how you respond to people asking or saying, or even maybe just the um, notion that R&B is dead. Mm. How do I, you respond to that? Because I, I feel like you're keeping that. it alive. I have nothing to do with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I have nothing to do with R&B. I'm R&B. <laughs> you're like, I, 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 if I had to comment on I what they're going through in reject. R&B right now, <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, you know, I, it's never dead. It's in everything. How can how can this genre be dead if it's in hip hop? If it's in pop? I feel like it's under every single every single rap song that comes out now or hip hop song, it has an R and B sound to it. Well, you can't go platinum now, damn near, without yeah. having a melody. You know what I mean? You yes. can't. You have to have melody now. Um, it's funny. I was going through this book. Um, it's this piano book. My mom got this for me years ago when I was a kid, too. Um, I was learning how to play piano. And uh, it was a 90s to 2000s, early 2000s uh, book on, like, pop hits, mm. you know, um, which I don't know why she bought me this book. <laughs> I, I don't want to learn. I n- definitely didn't want to learn any pop hits. <laughs> You're like, I was me. always wanting to do R&B. You know, let me. So you know, moms let me know get what books soul. you need. I don't know how they know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so. 
but I was looking at this book the other day because I found it again and I um and I was looking at the titles and I started listening to the songs, looking up the songs, listening to them. And when I tell you listening to what pop was in the 90s to what pop is today, mm -hmm. completely different. Oh, yeah. Changed 100%. Completely different. And what is the medium to what it is? You're adding in soul. You're adding in R&B. You're adding Facts. in these elements Facts. of urban music. You know what I'm saying? And that's in everything now. It's in country. It's in gospel. It's in, you know what I'm saying? It's in all of these different genres now. And to me, that's one of the main reasons why we had to bounce. You know what I'm saying? We had to dip, you know, and go find our own lane, mm -hmm. you know, create our own lane of R&B. r, &B, r &B. You know, because, again, you know, where R&B is at and, and what they're doing, like, I feel like it's a lot of, reconstructing right now we're trying trying to reconstruct it and figure out like how do we move it forward mm -hmm. how do we how do we advance it yeah and and not maintain it anymore you know because if we keep maintaining it we're going to lose more and more bits of it to hip-hop to pop to 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 you know country to all these different genres now that these are the new sounds for them so now yeah. we're forgetting that no that's actually r&b yeah you know what i'm saying so for us you know again even the way we love the way we feel the way we fight um in the bay area is completely different when it comes to relationships so when you talk about r and bay you know we love harder we love a little more uh ratchet you know what i'm saying a little more there is some <laughs> there is some tox some toxic in there you know what i'm saying <laughs> Um, but I we, but it's, but it's, yeah, but it's, it's natural. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, again, you coming from, from a place where, you know, this, this is a land of pimps and players and things and mm. such, you know? So there's a, there's a culture out there that everybody can't accept and can't understand. And if you don't know it, if you're not from it and you're trying to talk that language, you're going to sound goofy. And we know y'all women know, you know what I mean? Y'all have like this radar, goofy radar, like, nah, that ain't you. You either, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> eh, that's not you. But when you come from the Bay, it's like, it's almost being like born with it. Especially if you got the right OGs, you had the right people around you showing you the ropes and how to be like, you know, we, we, we're different with it. So that's just one of the reasons why I can have to say like, you know, I hope they get it together in r and I, I don't know. That's not my business no more though. You're going to get personal with me. Back. You just brought up relationship. Mm -hmm. How does, cause you are married with three kids. Mm -hmm. How does our wife, our lover, right? Mm -hmm. Inspire the R and B. Get on your nerves. <laughs> Does that inspire get the on your nerves. Get on your <laughs> the nerves. The R and B, you I know, say. yeah, that's how does, R and B. How does she inspire you know I mean? your music? I mean, she's a hyphy wifey. Okay, you know what I'm saying. So you know, oh, she's a hyphy wifey. She's I call a, myself a spicy wifey. Yeah, she's she a, a hyphy wifey. wifey. You know what that's I'm saying? That's cute. Yeah, it's um, you know, it's being stern. It's being confident. You know, it's it's being in your purpose. You know, mm. she her purpose was to be a queen of, of this household, queen of this of this family. You know. Um, and, and with that, you know, like I said, getting on my nerves, I don't, I don't want it to be taken like, you know, just, a the normal way, but it's yeah. getting on my nerves because she's keeping it real with me. Mm. You know, she's telling me you look goofy right now. <laughs> she's telling me this take stuff that you don't want to hear. Yeah. Take that off. Or, you know, that, Oh, you need to work on that note mm -hmm. or, Oh, you need to stop smoking a little bit. Cause I don't know that note last time didn't come out right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's those type of things that are constantly pressing me and not allowing me to get complacent or not allowing me to get stagnant mm. in, in what's going on and where I'm at, you know, because you can see some success and that success can just be, can be your, your universe. Yeah. And you live in that and not really, not really understanding that there's more to get to and there's yeah. more you can create. And with her, you know, she's always reminding me um, of what more there is and what more I can do. And even if she has her irritating wife way of doing it, it's still uh, it's still appreciated and it's still understood. You know what I mean? And just on top of that, like what man doesn't want to feel loved? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like what what man doesn't want to feel like somebody got you? Yeah. You know what I mean? We got a song called I Got You. And it's literally about that. It's about, you know, having somebody's back and them having yours, you know, and, and through it all, through all your mistakes, your flaws, you know, through all your BS, they still praying for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're still holding you down. They're still, you know, uplifting you. You have all these relationships where, you know, especially in the industry where there's so much hatred being talked about each other. Mm. There's so much like there's so many jabs being thrown at each other. You know, my mother in law told me a long time ago when we used to do it, she was like, y'all stop play fighting, you know. And for us, it's like, what's wrong with that? Ain't no wrong play fighting. You know, she's like, nah, stop play fighting. Cause after a while, you forget the difference. You know what mm. I mean? You forget you forget what's real and what's not, you know. 
Interesting. And, and for me, spicy tip, right? There. Yeah, because <laughs> because a hyphy tip. <laughs> okay. No, uh, <laughs> you feel me, hyphy tip. Yeah. <laughs> but no, um, but because you know, you get you get accustomed to that, and that becomes comfortable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even like you know the wrong type of jokes. I'm cautious about the jokes I tell. I say say to my wife, you know, mm. I have to make sure that you know I'm in tune with where she's at yeah. in her universe first. Because again, like like we talked about, there have you have moments where you don't love yourself. Yeah. And we go through that. You know what I'm saying? We go through those moments together. You know, um, especially as an artist when you're creating something brand new independently like this. You know, um, we have these brands, the Brodies, R and Bay. You know, um, CRSB and HMR selling all these all these things that we're putting together, and they take a lot of your time. Mm -hmm. They take a lot of your focus. They take they take a lot of finances as well. Mm. And when you talk about you know having a household with three children yeah and um you know trying to to keep everybody uplifted and all of that you know what i mean that gets that gets difficult you know what i mean but for me to be able to to write these songs with with my team and to be able to create this music and this genre and hold it down like this you know um she she does it she does it so well. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's it's. I'm sure it's an overwhelming feeling. I tell her all the time, if I was in her position, I'd have I'd have left me. <laughs> For sure. I'm like she's a better woman than me too, because I'm like I need somebody yeah. to support my dreams. So yeah, you know, and and, and I and, no, and I heard I heard you speaking of that before, and I and yeah. I try to, you know, a lot of her dreams that she has, you know, she's she's been pressing them as well. Mm -hmm. And I remember when she came to me and let me know that she was going to start doing pursuing her stuff, and my immediate response was like perfect whatever and she's like well don't say that because there's so much there's so many things Facts. that has to happen for that to happen and for me my thing is always like look we back to purpose when you walking in your purpose sometimes you don't see the floor yeah sometimes you don't see the ground but you just keep going so I'm not gonna sit here and try to be like hey well you know let's try to slow down and figure it out no is that is that what date do you start mm. January 9th so I got till January 9th to have something going to have this shit figured out to mm. where we can we can have something rolling. And I mean, we we're in what what's today? It's it's the what? Today's the 27th. We're still rolling. January 9th is past. <laughs> we're still going. So, you know, I mean, that's just the way I look at things. What you what you magnify and what you put out there, you will. And I and I believe that no matter what the circumstances is, somebody some people have it harder than others and in, in, in different versions, but if you're gonna be with somebody and you're gonna you're gonna take it serious and you're gonna you look at longevity mm -hmm. and, and for forever, you know, then you gotta understand that it's constantly gonna take sacrifices, mm. new sacrifices. It's never over. It's like working at McDonald's. If you work at McDonald's and you're a fry flipper and all the fries are flipped and there's no more fries, you do not get to go home. <laughs> now go grab you some lettuce and chop it, some tomatoes, <laughs> chop it. There's always more work to do. You know, and that's and as long as we've we've been able to keep that, you know, it's it's inspired me to keep doing what I'm doing and and putting that same hundred percent that I do into my family, into the music and vice versa. I love this. Oh, my yeah. gosh. You're giving like a wealth of relationship advice. Yeah. Um, I love these spicy high fee tips. Mm -hmm. um, last one, though, because you mentioned that uh you're it sounds like open to her feedback right yeah for sure sometimes in relationships your partner can give constructive criticism mm -hmm. and it not feel constructive mm -hmm. it just feel like criticism <laughs> that's all her what criticism. advice do you have <laughs> 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 what advice though do you have for uh the men out there who their wives do want to uplift yeah. them their wives you know do have a vision and mm -hmm. do want to help them improve mm -hmm. but ego gets involved and they're not mm -hmm. able to receive it or listen I mean, I'm definitely one of those men who, you know, she says something a certain way and then I'm just ticked. Now it's just like now I'm defending myself. Yep. Now I'm like, no, that's not right, because the reason why I'm doing that is because, you know, <laughs> instead of us, you know, but me not realizing that. I've been I've kept her out the loop. Mm -hmm. So when she's coming to me with this criticism, it may be something that I've already thought of. It may be something mm -hmm. that I've already done. And maybe that's why it's so irritating. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why it's pressing. It's tap dancing on the last nerve of mm -hmm. mine because, you know, I want to immediately just be like, well, man, you should know. You should know. And it's uh -huh. like I'm not involving you enough mm -hmm. so that you can see the growth in me and, and understand mentally where I'm at. Yeah. You know, um, 
even even well too. I just I'm real with her. I'm real with my wife. It's like, hey, work on the tone. <laughs> okay? I hear you. I want to hear you. I want to I want to be able to accept it with no doubt of what you're saying. But for e- whether it's male to female, female to male, whatever it is, it's like you have to know your person. And that's the thing. When you know your person mm-hmm. for real, then you can get out of, you can take all those like thoughts that come to mind yeah. that build up and create the ego and build up and create the pride. You can get rid of it because at that point, you know where they're coming from. Yeah. You know, I like to tell my wife, even when I have my moments with her, is that I'm never here to destroy you. Mm. I'm always here to build you up. Yeah. Building you up doesn't mean it always looks like just new parts coming in. Sometimes mm. it is me taking something out mm. and removing it so that a new and updated version can be in, in, you know, in place. And for me, as far as that, as far as those moments go, man, I just I just try to be vocal with her and have those real conversations with her and show her how to talk to me. Yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, we all individual people like we think that once we get together and once or once you get married or once whatever you have children that we become one. That's a lie. I'm not one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We we're working in one on through <laughs> one machine. We're trying to be on one accord. We're on one accord. Yeah. This is one machine put together. Our powers combined. We are Captain America, Facts. right? Facts. But <laughs> but it's like realistically though, Captain America breaks down into six different people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That do six different things. You know what I mean? So we're still different. And I have the pieces of me that I am that this is how I talk. Yeah. This is how I move. This is how I act. This is, you know what I mean? Same thing for her. This is how she acts. This is how she talks. This is how she speaks. I have to, first of all, say to myself, what is really detrimental to me? Mm -hmm. Is this really detrimental or am I being a brat? You know what I'm saying? Like, am I just, do I just want more from her? Yeah. Do I want her to work harder because it's always good to tell somebody to do some more work? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? (laughs) While you sit on the couch, you know? Like, but you just have to be, I had to be real with myself and just asking, like, some of those things that I'm getting mad at, they're really minute. They're really not. It's just, that's how, that's how my babe talks. That's how she speaks. You know what I'm saying? And every now and then, as I, as we go through it, I get to see her make those make those adjustments on her own yes. rather than me nagging her to do it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, I can, I can see her take a thought and say, she'll even mess up sometimes and be like, well, why you don't, never mind. Let me rephrase. Never mind. <laughs> never mind. No, 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 it's good. It's good. It's good. You know, but it's, you know, I mean, that's, I but feel it sounds like you, like you guys that. are working together and teaching one another. Yeah. Uh, two things. I love that you called uh, Captain America, Captain Planet. Yeah. Um. Captain America, <laughs> Captain Planet. <laughs> 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 So just on that note, right? Because my Marvel loving husband would right. uh, be he very would upset just about be that. Hell um. mad at that. I swear uh, I know who Captain America is. Uh, second thing, I love that you spoke to tone. Uh, you being an artist, right? Yeah. Tone matters. Oh, extremely important. So extremely uh, you're important. able to recognize when something is out of pitch or out of tone. Period. Um, but the third thing that you mentioned that I really appreciated was this like give and take in the communication mm-hmm. system that you guys have created mm-hmm. um, because communication is transactional. Yeah. You not only saying, hey, I'm going to teach you through my behavior and mm-hmm. you're going to try to mirror it, mm-hmm. but I'm also going to tell you how I want to be spoken to. Exactly. So like work, there is no reason that we should not be on the same accord and mm-hmm. learning when it comes mm-hmm. to communication because I'm showing you all the different facets and yeah. how this can get done. Yeah. Um, so I love these like, Hyphy tips. Um, just you, for today. Th- just for today. Okay. In honor of Adrian Marcel, I love yeah. these hyphy tips that you're giving us. Yes. Let everybody know where they can find you, yeah. how they can get more of you, your music, yes. uh, all of your work. Because yes. uh, I've, of course, been like a huge lover and fan of you forever. Thank you so much. Um, every song that you put out, I'm yeah. like, pretending like come on yeah, i know how to i was i was shocked when was you were telling me you were you, you love the bib city when i was like let's go so fire that's the let's, one i'm like oh can we play that yes we absolutely can let, play that. let everybody know where they can find you to get your stuff yeah so um you know there's this thing called google you go in there you type in stuff right and when you type it in it's like this world, vast open world of information right it's like a database a metadata of everything you're typing in so you can go to the metadata of adrian marcel which is 
it's like it's pretty sexy so just you can also go to his IG take it slow he's which into is it. He's into it, right? <laughs> no but yeah find me on IG Adrian Marcel uh, Twitter Adrian Marcel 510 um, you know there's a lot of a lot of dope things coming out look look out for it the Brodies um, R&B is a real thing it's taking over R&B season one will be out by the end of this year so be ready for that Dip City featuring E40 produced by Sunny B it's out right now be on the lookout for the video it's a slobberoni for real um, also wait featuring CRSB is out all digital platforms some new music for y'all to go get ready to vibe to get ready for R&B season one because it's definitely gonna be some cuddling and some Ooh. you feel me you yeah um, on top of that November 3rd UC Theater, if you are in the Bay Area, if you're a fan of spicy and the spicy life, you feel me? And you in the Bay, man, come out November 3rd, Homegrown 6, the r Bay experience. If you have questions like Spice did about what r Bay is, let us show it to you. you this sounds me? like a good date night. Yeah, oh, it's a great date I night. I would it. love for you to bring the husband. Y'all should Look, come up. We can have, we'll have tickets you don't for have you. You to tempt me, I'll fly out. Yes, right? let's do that. You <laughs> I'll know bring what I'm saying? I'll get a sitter. <laughs> come on. So it's, it's going to be a lot of Bay love. It's going to be a lot of things going on with that. Um, just be on the lookout. Follow CRSB, Adrian Marcel. Um, spicy, I appreciate you thank for letting you me so come up much. here and be hyphy with you. you know being I mean? on the show, and thank you for all of the nuggets that you gave. Yes, you. Uh, you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at Spicy Mari. Go to thespicylife.com. Share this episode with a friend. Make sure that you click and subscribe to uh, our YouTube pod and podcast. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life. Cartier frames Cartier on his wrist instead of bipping the window. He bipping the bitch. He got oil on his tongue. He talk real slick. He capable of making baby come out of fit. <laughs> <laughs>